Southwest Research Institute, where a team of engineers created a powerful turbine only the size of a desk. It can even provide power to a small town. No one paused in anticipation. No headlines proclaimed a shift. Yet, deep within sealed walls and silent machinery, a new kind of engine began to stir. Not driven by water, not by steam, but by carbon dioxide forced into a rare state few have ever heard of. Supercritical. Thick like a liquid. Quick like a gas. Invisible. Soundless. And it could be the key to changing how we produce power. Not from industrial giants or governments, but from a small, determined team. What they built might close the chapter on steam. And it already exists. Let's explore. The end of steam. For more than a hundred years, the steam turbine reigned supreme. It powered nearly every plant on the planet. Coal, gas, nuclear, biomass. The principle never changed. Burn fuel, heat water, create steam. The steam expands, sweeps over turbine blades, and turns a generator. Reliable, predictable, perfected. Or so we believed. Yet hidden inside every turbine is a quiet cost. Steam must change phase from liquid to vapor. That transformation takes significant energy, energy that never turns into electricity, locked away in the process. Engineers fine-tuned every curve, every blade, every stage of pressure. But water's limitations, both physical and thermodynamic, could not be escaped. Efficiency could only go as far as steam would allow. The turbine became a well-built cage, strong but never unbreakable. And so, the world quietly waited for something better. Not bigger, not louder, but smarter. The answer would not come from forcing steam further. It would come from abandoning it entirely. From trusting a substance that defied categories, neither gas nor liquid, but something in between. Between the states, supercritical carbon dioxide refuses to behave as expected. It doesn't boil. It doesn't condense. It exists in a strange middle ground. Not quite a gas, not quite a liquid. Scientists call it a fluid, but even that feels too ordinary. Under high heat and pressure, CO2 reaches a point where the line between phases vanishes. It moves like a gas, but with the density of a liquid. In that state, something remarkable happens. It becomes useful in ways steam never could. Supercritical CO2 travels faster, carries more heat, and compresses with minimal effort. It wastes no energy changing form. It simply circulates, expands, contracts, again and again. And because it never has to cross that costly vapor-liquid boundary, it achieves efficiencies once thought purely theoretical. To watch it in action feels strange. The process appears familiar, a loop of heating, movement, and cooling. Yet the fluid inside is alien, controlled turbulence, a moving phantom. And in that interplay of pressure and temperature lies the promise of a new kind of power. The man who refused to stop. Dr. Jeff Moe never set out to topple the steam turbine. Not initially. He wasn't part of an energy giant or a government lab. He led a small group with scarce funds and limited tools, but with an idea that refused to let go. Most experts dismissed it. Supercritical CO2 was too unstable, too difficult to contain. Materials wouldn't hold up. Seals would fail. Pressures were extreme. Temperatures were merciless. Even those who believed in the concept saw it as far off, not for the present. Jeff persisted, quietly, methodically, testing designs others had abandoned, running simulations no one bothered to try. What fueled him wasn't pride. It was curiosity and the conviction that we were overlooking something obvious. The barrier wasn't physics. It was fear. Rather than out-engineer the steam turbine, he sidestepped it entirely with something smaller, stranger, 
and infinitely more refined. The loop without limits. The traditional steam cycle is noisy, in pressure changes, in heat losses, in inefficiency. It starts by boiling water. Steam turns the turbine, cools, condenses, and repeats. Each phase change takes its toll, sapping energy that never returns. With supercritical CO2, there's no boiling, no condensing, no pause for a change of state. The loop moves like steady breathing, smooth, constant, efficient. Heat drives CO2 beyond 700 degrees Celsius. It expands in the turbine, producing mechanical power for the generator. Then, instead of condensing, it cools just enough to be easily compressed again. Dense enough to save energy, fast enough to keep the cycle alive. Nothing evaporates, nothing is lost. That's its brilliance. Without phase changes, there are fewer moving parts, less wear, greater control, and all inside a machine no larger than a dishwasher. The magic isn't just in the turbine, it's in the absence of interruptions, a flow without friction, a rhythm without resistance, power in a box. When engineers first saw the prototype, some laughed. Too small, too plain. A toy compared to the towering machines of old power stations. They didn't realize what they were looking at. This wasn't a shrunken copy. It was a new paradigm. Supercritical CO2 turbines need no huge cooling towers, no endless water lines. They don't sprawl across acres. They condense. They concentrate. A system that once required entire buildings can now fit under a desk. Ten times smaller, equally capable. That size isn't just convenient. It's transformative. Small means portable, modular, decentralized. Power where and when it's needed, without waiting on infrastructure. Remote industry, isolated communities, disaster zones, places steam could never reach. This could. And in the soft hum of that compact box, you wouldn't hear the future arriving. You'd hear it already working, steady, clean, unstoppable. A power source meant not to stand out, but to quietly endure. The hidden cost. But every breakthrough carries its challenges. Keeping CO2 supercritical requires heat that melts metal and pressure that shatters steel. Materials degrade, seals leak, sensors drift. This system offers no forgiveness, only precision. Alloys must endure above 700 degrees Celsius. Chambers must hold up to 250 bar. Every weld and bolt is a potential failure point. Then there's longevity. These machines must run for years without pause. No failures. That kind of reliability is earned slowly, in silent test rooms over months, where breakdowns leave no smoke, just stillness. And the price remains high. Specialized alloys, high-grade compressors, precision parts, they don't come cheap. Not yet. Before it can reshape the grid, it must also pass the slow grind of certification and regulation. Because even the most elegant cycle must move through the machinery of human approval. Light for a billion. If the performance numbers hold, everything changes. A 10 to 20% efficiency gain might seem modest, but on the global scale, it's massive. Applied to existing coal, gas, or nuclear plants, it could unlock over 2,000 terawatt hours of electricity. That's not abstract math. That's light in dark homes. Power for 1.2 billion people. Old plants could be reborn. Same structure, new heart. Rather than demolish them, we could upgrade them. Feed in the same heat from fuel, sunlight, anything and get more out, with less waste, less land, less water. While the world chases distant energy dreams, this is something we could do now. Not theory, not decades away. The turbines already spin, the loop already runs. 
The goal isn't building more, it's using what exists more wisely, turning every plant into something cleaner, quieter, sharper, starting today. A future waiting for permission. The technology works. The turbines are real. They hum away in quiet rooms, proving the improbable one rotation at a time. Yet, progress stalls. The obstacle now isn't science. It's the system. Rules written for steam. Safety codes tied to water. Approval processes stuck in the past. Before conversion begins, paperwork must be filed, tests repeated, politics navigated. Manufacturers face another hurdle, cost at scale. These alloys aren't ordinary. The seals are bespoke. Scaling up precision is never trivial. For now, the machines remain rare, awaiting adoption. Waiting for someone with the will and the patience to approve them. Still, hope lingers. One working project is all it takes. One utility willing to take the leap. Then momentum builds. When it happens, it won't feel like revolution, just quiet improvement. One day, your light switch will work as always, but the power behind it will come from something new, smaller, smarter, hidden. The steam age began in smoke and noise. This one starts in silence. We imagine the future as loud, bright, full of spectacle. But often, the true breakthroughs arrive quietly, not in headlines, but in background hums, in turbines that spin without steam, in cycles that waste nothing. The supercritical CO2 turbine is more than an engineering success. It's a reminder that progress doesn't always change what you see. Sometimes it hides in what stays the same, the wires, the lights, the warmth in your home, all powered more intelligently. This isn't just new technology, it's a quieter kind of tomorrow. And perhaps that's exactly what we've been waiting for.